Hi folks, I absolutely love running five axis parts now. It has completely reinvigorated my passion for machining, for making parts, and the sort of technology side of the workflows. And we've already learned a ton about this process of getting this machine, getting it programmed up, how to run the Fusion 360 software side of things, how to run our fixturing, our tooling, and just what's that overall process. And I want to share that with you. We've got some pretty cool tips and tricks on how we bring parts through to get them from our idea to sometimes one and done on this. And it's just amazing to me. I know it's obvious I've held hundreds, if not thousands of parts made on a five axis machine before, but when you actually own one and are running one, it is phenomenal. So take a look. So here's a part we need to make for Johnny Five. Awesome candidate for positional five axis work. And this particular one is one of the center joints of Johnny Five's hand. First thing I'll do is create a new component. I'm gonna call this stock. It's quite helpful to model uh, your stock on these five axis parts. I'm gonna create a rectangle. We'll extrude this two sides and we can drag it up there to clear it. And now we're gonna make this piece of stock a slightly longer than you normally might. That'll give us plenty of room to tab this part off. Assemble, rigid group, and we can click our part and our stock. This locks those two together. That way when they move, they move in relation to each other. Because the next key part of this, this is what I love, is we built these predefined setups. Right now we have A, B, and C. And A is my small five axis vise. So I'll right click, insert into current design, click OK, assemble, joint, create a joint between our setup A, and I'll hide this all, and the origin right there. Turn that back on. That locks our fifth axis base in space. It would be kind of like doing a ground, but this is the better way to do it. And with that lockdown, we can now slide our jaws in and out, subject to their own motion link limits, which is really cool. J for joint, click the bottom of our stock, and then select the joint origin that's at the center of our self-centering vise. And I wanna rotate it 90 degrees, click OK. And then perhaps the first time I'll ever in the history of using Fusion 360 that I will actually use the capture position. So what I love about this is it makes the process for programming these parts easier, especially sort of offline or when I'm not even at the shop. Here are some of the setups that we've already been through. The foundation is the rock lock base. The first thing you can put on it is the master pallet. You can use this to probe in the precision bore and the Z-plane. This can let you either automate your probing cycles or have a coordinate system that you can use in Fusion. That way you don't actually have to do any probing on your part. We've used the small vise the most. It's quite handy for many of the smaller parts that we've done. We had a really small part though where we had to lift it up higher up to get clearances. And this was this became a one and done. So we made a small tapered fixture with a pit bull and a talon grip, worked great. We can also run our MRZP calibration cycles using the Haas tooling ball by just holding it inside the fifth axis vise. We don't have to strip off the table, which is nice. And then finally, a custom set of soft shells for the small vise. These were half inch diameter hardened 440C stainless bushings that we had to do some machining, thread milling, and then drill a hole all the way through it. Soft shells seemed like the best secure way to run that batch. I think it was about 20 parts, worked great. We also got the larger vise to start with, which is actually pretty crazy. This was a four and a half by four and a half by 10 inch chunk of 7075 plate. We do work on all five sides of this part and had no problem holding on to it. The last work holding thing we got with our starter kit was the ER40 chuck. Obviously it will be great for holding anything in the smaller round bar diameter range. I know Ed has some ideas and projects he wants to try on custom tooling bodies to hold like our own tooling design for indexable inserts. There's some Johnny Five parts as well. I've got some larger round stuff that we'll end up probably doing in a traditional lathe chuck that will mount uh, either directly onto the table or maybe we'll turn it into a rock lock. We did have to run a batch of parts that were about 11 and a half inches. Same thing, we had to do work on the top of the part as well as the full periphery around it. So here we just machined a custom riser base. Four of the screws are rock lock locks that go down into the rock lock base. The other four we have already screwed into the piece of raw material 
from the underside, so we did a kind of an op zero on the raw material, that let us hold onto this and get access to all five sides, or rather the top and the full periphery, it worked great. And then finally, if you already watched the video we just did on the Theo tool post, we started that raw material in the larger vise, but then we moved it over to another piece of aluminum that had the rock locks in it. That gave us full access to all five sides and let it secure that lathe tool post in the same manner in which it's going to be used on Theo's lathe. If you're trying to learn five axis machining, Toolpass Fusion 360 has some really good recently updated cam samples. Open up your data panel, scroll all the way to the bottom, cam samples, intro to simultaneous five axis. There's actually both positional work as well as true simultaneous in this example. If you're trying to learn more about some of the other aspects of Fusion 360, including getting a better grasp on how to use joints, which are really important when you're handling these stock workpiece and work holding setups, head over to the NYC CNC page. We've got some really good tutorial videos on Fusion 360 joints. Fusion 360 comes with a post processor for the Haas UMC 750 ready to use, and it does work fine, but we're using the Camplete TruePath software. This gives us verification or crash detection. It also has a tremendous amount of other capabilities. We'll do some videos on that later, but the basic crash detection is really incredibly valuable. Programming the part in Fusion 360 is really easy. I've got a standard setup to do positional work. All we do is a standard operation. Let's say we want to do a 2D contour. We'll use this 1 16th inch tool. And if we want to interpolate out this hole under geometry, all you have to do is click tool orientation, pick my Z axis. By picking this face here, you'll watch the blue Z axis will orient itself normal to that face. You don't actually have to worry about the X or the other axes. Your post processor figures that out. It's a little bit misleading. Pick my contour, click OK, you're done. We can add things to patterns. That way they automatically do both sides. And while we're programming this, we can use the holder in Fusion 360 to get a pretty decent idea if we're going to have sufficient clearance. In this case, we can clearly see that the ER holder with this amount of stick out, which is longer than I would normally prefer, will be okay. Likewise, take a look here. Looks sufficient. And then lastly, within the setup, edit. We're gonna choose fixture. And from our CAD tree, we're going to pick the SMW setup A. That is, tells Fusion that this is the fixture. And this is important because when I'm ready to run this code or I want to check for collisions, we'll post it. Instead of posting just directly to the Haas UMC 750, I'm going to post to Camplete True Path. Hit post. Post it into a dump folder. Click yes. And TruePath does a lot of things. We'll do a deep dive video on it later. We're still learning it ourselves, but it will take over some of your transitions and linking moves, which is really cool, subject to your own preferences. Uh, you can do things like manipulate polar interpolation. You can update coordinate systems. Lots of incredibly powerful things that you can do in the software. My main purpose for it right now is to make sure we don't crash our machine. So you can either scrub through the part and watch it yourself, or under the collision check, you can set some of your preferences on what you want to look for. Do you want to look for the tool gouging the part, the tool crashing with your fixture, with the over travel of your machine range, uh, various different types of things that can go bad. And that will give you a full blown report after you run through it. But so long as you've got your holder set up correctly and your gauge lengths and stick out set up correctly, this gives you the confidence to know you're not going to crash your machine. Having a five axis just has completely rejuvenated my passion for making parts because it lets me do what I want to do, which is program the part and make the part and not have to deal with thinking about how many setups do I need to do or do I have to use another pair of soft jaws and and you make better decisions because you can orient the part the way you want to to take the cut that you want. Card here to the video we also just released on making the tool post for TA Crafted, which could have been done on a three axis or fourth axis, aside from some repositioning for these holes, but it's so much better with these undercuts and surfaces to do this on a five axis machine. Likewise, one of the first parts we've got to make for Johnny Five is this larger bearing bracket that helps support his toe tip mechanism. We're going to be holding it on the smaller fifth axis vise, a fair amount of stick out. I'm pretty confident that we're going to be able to get this done to the accuracy and specs that we need. We can flip the part over, 
tackle from each way, tackle this slot, tackle that hole. It's just awesome. Feels a little bit like that transition to 3D printing where you just hit print and you get your part. There's obviously more to it in terms of programming, but that's our next step. We absolutely love using the Fusion 360 templates. So when you have a tool and a recipe nailed down that you like, especially with these longer gauge length tools or areas where you have the part stuck out more, yes, we may have to reduce our width of cut or radial engagement on an adaptive because of how far out this workpiece is being held in the vise. That's okay. We can save those things as templates. And then when we have a new part to program, we can right click, create from template and just apply that template. And that ties into the other thing on our to-do list, which is to standardize our tooling. We've had the UMC for a few months now. I've started to understand things like I like running the Corloy Ripper as a one inch tool as a face mill because it's a longer tool. It has a relatively square shoulder so I can get closer up to the edge of parts. It works great both as a finishing face mill but also as a roughing tool. And it's got through spindle coolant which is the best way to ensure regardless of where the part is or if something else is being blocked, you're gonna get coolant there and evacuate those chips. I'm thinking what we'll do is standardize about 20 to 25 tools in the UMC. It's got a 40 tool ATC, so that'll give us 10 or 15 swing tools that we can replace on a job by job or part by part basis. But we know we've always got that face mill or that chamfer tool or, or that quarter inch long square shouldered end mill or that half inch bull nose that we can use for surfacing and contouring. As always folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. We've got way more content coming. If you guys remember the movie Short Circuit, we are building a full-blown Johnny 5 from scratch. This machine is gonna be awesome to make a lot of those parts. What used to be six, seven, eight, ten 10 setups for all those angles, now one and done, or maybe two ops on this, which is awesome. For job shopping, being able to hold a part in a single fixture work holding process and be able to get to all those sides, just amazing. It seriously gets me so fired up. If you are a manufacturing entrepreneur, a job shop, trying to bring a product to market, I absolutely would encourage you to think about this sooner than I thought about it. I thought about it as this long-term threshold um, and, and kind of luxury, and the reality is uh, this is so helpful as a force multiplier for how you can make better parts, be more efficient, and, and just it's really a lot of fun. Take care, folks. See you soon.